Hi, I just wanted to put a quick video together about the TBS Discovery and some of the lessons learnt during the build. There's some great videos on YouTube giving you instructions on how to build this quadcopter. Um, for me, you know, the official Team Black Sheep video was really helpful, but maybe was a bit quick in parts for the novice. Aside from all that, I'll put a few points together here um, on the bits I found difficult. So one point to note was the positioning of the NASA. There's a couple of white lines in the middle of the TBS Discovery base plate which seems to suggest that's where you should put it, but the problem when you put it there is it's not right in the centre and these white cables out to the, the ESCs end up being a bit stretched, so I think if I was doing it again I'd be tempted just to push it back a bit further into the centre of gravity there and not have these quite so tight. And I'm not particularly impressed with the supplied um, bolts, these little M2.5 or 2 bolts that they provide. They're too soft on the top, sheared really easily for me with an Allen key and I had to use uh, like a Torx screwdriver head instead to get them out. Um, without them being completely stripped. So I've ended up buying some more bolts with just a Phillips screwdriver head on them which I find far easier to get them tight and get them out again. As shown in the Team Black Sheep video, I definitely recommend getting some screw lock um, before you put these bolts in place. They're just too loose otherwise and will easily vibrate out. So yeah, this is what I got was just some well, it's just a knockoff of a Loctite screw lock. The not the strong stuff, otherwise you'll never get the the bolts out. But this stuff's quite nice. It keeps it stuck in place, um, and less concern about screws coming off mid-flight or coming loose gradually and creating more and more vibration on the camera. Even though I bought the TBS Discovery all-in-one kit, thinking that would have pretty much everything. I needed to fly. This cable is eventually the thing that stopped me from getting it in the air. Surprisingly they don't actually provide a normal power cable to connect to the battery. Maybe they think you're going to connect it to the to the RSD which has a power input as well but yeah I contacted Trappy about it and he said they don't include it because of expense and stuff and they think people have got this hanging around but I don't think an XT60 connector would be lying around in a novice person's house and I ended up having to buy a pack of them from Hobby King in Hong Kong which took a couple of weeks to come um, so yeah, be forewarned if you're going to fly in a basic setup then you're going to have to buy one of these extension cables for me wanting to get going quickly I just stuck the GoPro mount directly on to the baseboard and I thought I'll see how that goes so far it's actually been really good, um, as long as you haven't got you know any bad vibration and all the props and everything's balanced properly. Um, I've got the new Hero 3 Black, very nice piece of kit. I uh, forced myself into buying this because I took the old Hero into the Blue Lagoon in Iceland in my pocket without the waterproof back on and that was the end of that. So. Hero 3 was purchased, really nice unit. Um, the one thing I have discovered though is if you run it in 1080p in 30 frames per second mode you do get the jello effect even if you've got you know quite a nicely balanced uh, unit but after doing some googling on it just switch this into 60 frames per second and all that jello goes away. So I've got the Futaba 8FG Super uh, radio controller and just flying it um, fairly close range at the moment on the 2.4 GHz. I do like this, um, this single S-Bus connector which means I only need one cable plugged in to the NASA as opposed to doing all of these you know, for, the, uh, for the pitch and the yaw and all the different settings there. Um, although it, is, it would be slightly annoying if you had to hook up a Futaba on the TBS Discovery with the, the numbered ports because the one 
is on the opposite side here, so you'd have to diagonal all across, which would be a right cable mess. But anyway, SBUS rules um, until such time I need to go down the UHF route. So to the battery unit, I found on a couple of occasions that towards the end of the flight the battery would be half hanging out the end of the frame, even though I'd tightened up the, the TBS Velcro fasteners quite tight. Um, so that would be pretty scary, especially after looking at some other YouTube videos where the battery has come out and swung around and gone into the prop. So for me, just as a little safety feature, I bought one of these, just these 3M Velcro straps. And I, uh, I just put it around the back and connect it up like that and it, it creates just a little safety gate really. I bought two sets of Grapner E-Props uh, with the original package and before I'd even got it outside I managed to crack on the props inside as I was practicing. Um, so I definitely recommend getting at least one extra prop clockwise and counterclockwise when you're going to buy one of these kits just in case otherwise you end up waiting a couple of weeks for that to come. But um, since I couldn't get the Grapners in time and I just ordered some of these slightly cheaper ones, what they call you know, weed cutters, but um, this was from quadcopters.co.uk I think, and so far they've been really good actually, they create a nicer noise, um, and so far it's creating a nice smooth flight for the smooth video, so I'm going to stick with these for the time being, I've got some new grout nose, but um, so far so good with those. Soldering wise is fairly new to it, I've done some soldering decades ago but um, nothing as detailed as this but got a new soldering iron, have a look on YouTube there's some good videos on there about techniques um, but what I did find is I started out with one of the, the wider heads that comes with the soldering iron which is okay for the bigger plates to put the battery connectors on and that kind of thing but for the smaller detail like on the, uh, these guys I found the the pointed tip far more accurate to get um, those bits of solder in place. Just be careful with the soldering that you don't um, heat the contact points up too much. I don't think I'm going to be able to get any detail on this, but I originally tried to put the the NASA connection points on this side, heated up these plates, and when I went to solder it on, it actually lifted them up off the baseboard. Um, I can probably rescue that with some delicate soldering, but uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't need to be superheated. Just a little word about the cables coming off the ESC controllers. On some of the videos I watched, all of the cables seem to have this three cable strand. And some of them have only got the one white cable, a bit concerned by that, but doing a bit of reading about it, turns out on one of them there's this EBS sort of controller link stroke power I think, I'm not quite sure what it does but yeah, you don't need three the cables on all of the ESCs, just on the one if you're going to do some calibration and stuff. So yeah, that's been my experience of the TBS Discovery base build. I'm going to put the, the FPV camera, the OSD and the a video transmitter on now, um, but I hope that might have been useful to some of you. I know I couldn't have built this to the same standard without the help of all the other videos on YouTube, and hopefully it'll save you from making some of the minor mistakes that I made and would do differently next time if I was building again. So, yeah, see you later. <laughs>